Good morning, it's Monday, September 18th, and today I want to give you some information about the auto strike that's going on. This is a strike that involves much more than just pay for the automobile workers and for the companies themselves. Let us not forget that these companies are in business to make money. And yes, it's true that their executives make a hell of a lot more money than the workers do. But there's a major factor that is included in this strike that many people haven't heard about it. And it's the electric car. The fact that all of our companies, all of our U.S. companies have to get into the business of making electric cars. And Tesla has been way ahead of them. And Tesla is not a union shop. In fact, many auto workers who work for other companies besides the big three, the ones that are being struck, are not members of the union. But a big portion of this strike is not so much about money as it is about jobs and about the future of the union and the future of the auto company. It's really, really a strike that has electric vehicles at its center. Because when you consider making an electric vehicle, the one important fact in that is the battery. And the battery eliminates many, many parts that are used in a conventional automobile. Mufflers and things like that are gone because there is no gasoline in these cars. And so because parts disappear, workers disappear, because you need less people to put an electric car together. So that is a main piece of information that we must understand about this strike. And the automobile manufacturers have come off their edge. They have offered a 20% increase over five years. Whereas the auto workers are asking for 40% over five years. But the auto manufacturers are in the process of expanding their business to include the electric vehicles and to reduce the gasoline vehicles that they're producing. And that's going to take billions of dollars out of their pockets. That doesn't mean that I'm not in favor of giving the union members their raise and their true things because the executives in automobile business make a fortune compared to what the workers make. But this strike is going to continue to give Tesla and other manufacturers who are already making electric vehicles a big edge in the marketplace. That could be a terrible situation for the auto industry in general. And the auto industry, which right now is producing about 7% of the actual cars on the road as electric cars, right? And Tesla has most of that market if you look around. And Ford and GM are struggling with their electric vehicles. And Ford's, the Ford 150 truck, which was an electric vehicle, had a problem and it's caught fire, so they're not putting that on the market so fast. So there are many, many things going on in the automobile industry that affect this whole strike in a different way than normal strikes are being affected. And of course, as I say, at the center of this thing is his electric vehicles. So when we look at this strike, we have to recognize the fact that this is the biggest technological transformation since Henry Ford invented the moving assembly line at the beginning of the 20th century. So over a hundred years later, we have a transformation going on in the auto industry. And that's not going to stop. It has to continue. And the big three, Ford, GM, and Stellantis, that used to be Chrysler, are under terrific pressure from government officials and the changing demands of the consumers. And they've got to invest billions of dollars to 
to their sprawling operations in order to make these electric cars. And they're not going to make any money. And meanwhile, Tesla's running away with the industry. They're dominating the industry. And they are profitable and growing fast. And Ford has said the electric vehicle business is going to cost them $4.5 billion this year. And that's without giving the employees these raises. So if they have to give them raises... They're going to be putting a lot of money in the pot here. And Ford also said that the auto workers are making twice as much money as the workers at the Tesla plants. How about that? You know, the union demands could force Ford to scrap its entire investment in electric vehicles. That's what one of the company executives said. But I don't think Ford can afford to do that because if they do that, they're going to lose a lot of sales. Electric vehicles are the car of the future, so Ford has to stay in the game. But they don't want to be forced to choose between going out of business and rewarding our workers. Well, I think that's a hope. That's not a, you know, that's a a cop-out statement. They know they have to get into the electric car business to stay alive. But in addition to the fact that the electric car vehicles have fewer parts, plants that make mufflers and catalytic converters and fuel injectors and other components that electric cars don't need, those plants will be shut down. And the new factories will be springing up in the south where the labor laws are tilted against union organizers. So these plants, these new plants, where they're going to build these electric cars, are going to not be in the Midwest, where the United Auto Workers have a lot of clout, but they're going to be down south, where the working conditions and the wages are much less. So that's another kick in the ass for the union. So one other factor must be included in this thing, that there will be jobs available for these auto workers because new plants that that manufacture batteries and other parts that are not necessarily needed for the current version of cars will need employees. So these employees could go to work in these other plants instead of the plants that they're currently working. However, because those plants are in the south, That's a problem. That means uprooting your family from the Midwest and moving south and possibly living in an environment that is not conducive to making a a great living. And the union recognizes that fact. And so one of their demands is that the new factories be covered by the automaker's national labor contract. A demand that the automakers have said they can't meet because those plants are not owned by them, but they're owned in a joint venture. They don't own the plant. The union also wants to regain the right to strike to block plant shutdown. So the way the auto workers see it right now is that this is the dawn of another industrial revolution. And they are afraid that it'll go the same way that the last industrial revolution went. A lot of profit for a few and misery and not good jobs for many. So I leave with those thoughts. And there are many other factors that we will have to look at over the coming weeks. Have a great day. Take care.